Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Firing Glory Outpouring. How are you guys? You guys ready to jump in into the river of God tonight? Come on, I feel the fire of his love. Come on, the flame of the Father coming from the throne. Come on, his, his goodness and his love is upon us right now. Come on, let's just step in tonight and let's um, go face to face with the Lord. Come on, he's, he's, we're going we're gonna to excel, we're going to go, and we're going to go into the hill of God. Jesus, we thank you, the mountain of the Lord tonight. Come on, we can, um, everyone that's watching online, this is the Fire Glory Outpouring. We just want to invite you guys just to, um, just to come in with us, and we're going to intercede right now. And uh, we're just going to pray that Jesus would have his way tonight. Come on, Jesus, we love you, Lord. Lord, we just come to you, Lord, with humble hearts, God, thanking you, God, for your goodness, thanking you, Lord, for your glory tonight. And, Father, that you would rend the heavens, Lord, right now. Woo, Father, we thank you for your, for the living flame, Lord, right now, God, the flame of fire, Lord, touching our hearts, God, Lord, the refiner's fire, Lord, that's, that's being released from your throne. Oh, Rabakate, Jesus, we embrace you tonight. Lord, we thank you, God, for this weekend. Lord, the prophetic destiny, God, that you're releasing over us. God, that you're unlocking promises. Lord, you're unlocking, Father, dimensions, Lord, for us to walk into. And Jesus, we thank you for your blood tonight. Lord, we thank you, God, for your mercy, Jesus, and your kindness over us. And God, we decree right now, Lord, that you would, you would, Father, release the command of the Lord, Jesus. God, you are the commander of the Lord of hosts. God, the God of the angel armies. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that you are seated on the throne. Oh, you are seated on the throne. And Lord, we decree, God, over, over cities and regions tonight, Lord, that they would be touched by your fire, that they would be touched by your glory. And God, that you would have your way, Lord, in the nations. God, that you would raise up, Father, harvesters, Lord, revivalists, Lord, miracle workers, God, out of this place, Lord, into the whirlwind of God. Woo! Shit, God, have I got time. Oh, I see the whirlwind of Ezekiel 1 right now. Come on, there's a commissioning this weekend. Even as Ezekiel went up in the whirlwind and the mantles of fire begin to fall. Woo, Jesus, I see mantles being released right now from the whirlwind of his presence. Lord, we decree, God, Jesus, that you are woo, the one who carries the seven spirits of God. Oh, you're the one, Lord, with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Oh, the fullness of the Holy Ghost. God, we thank you tonight, Lord, that should release your fullness upon us. Holy Spirit, we want to know you in a greater way. Oh, Holy Spirit, we want to see you. Oh, come on, I see the fire of God being released. Come on, there's an authority tonight. There's an authority that he's going to release upon us that we would go into the highways and in the byways and that we would reap the harvest. Who that we would carry that sickle of the Lord. Oh, and that God would make his presence known amongst the people that that people would turn who that they would come into the knowledge of the son of god who the knowledge of his glory oh holy spirit oh we ask you to have your way holy ghost breathe on us breathe upon our our bodies right now lord we thank you god for the fullness of heaven Lord, we thank you, God, for the for the for you, Lord, who's seated on the throne. God, the, the heavenly host, Lord, surrounding your throne. And God, all the angels, Lord. All the angels, God, accompanying your throne. Oh, Father. Woo! God, let your abode be in this place tonight. God, we want your abode. Father, we want the third heaven to be in unison with the earth. Lord, that you would release woo, the heavenly abode. The fullness of the kingdom inside of us. Oh, Jesus, we thank you that you said that the kingdom of heaven is within us. God, we release your kingdom, Lord, all over this atmosphere. And God, I thank you for your mighty hand. Oh, the hand of the Lord coming forth, God, upon us. Oh, your mighty right hand, Lord. 
Oh, Father, you're so good. Come on, in his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Come on, the pleasure of God. Woo, he wants to take us in into the banqueting hall where we begin to encounter the wine of heaven. We begin to encounter the oil of God, the grain. Come on, God is mixing up the anointing tonight. Woo, that he would pour out the anointing upon us. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you are the anointed one. Oh, Jesus, that you're the one who carries the oil. Lord, you're the one, God, who with all the pleasure in your heart, Lord. And we thank you, oh, that we are your sons, we're your daughters. And God, that you're pouring out the pleasure of your love tonight, the pleasure of your heart. Who and I thank you, Lord, for the healing power of God tonight. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Shekarabayoto. Oh, that you'd release your healing power, Father, from your throne, Lord. Come on, begin to pray. Begin to just step in. Lift up a sound to the Lord right now. Begin to stir yourself up. Woo, build yourself up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Spirit and keeping us in the love of the Father, in the perfect love of God. Come on, I see the building. I see the wheels turning tonight. Come on, on the throne, there's wheels. Woo, there's wheels that are filled with the eyes. Woo! Shake out of The four living creatures around the throne like lightning. Oh, God, we thank you, Father. Oh, that you would have your way, Lord, in this place, God. Have your way, Lord. Let heaven invade, God. Oh, let the wheels of fire begin to burn, Lord, in this place. Begin to turn. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you're surveying the land. And you're going to come and drop on us tonight. Oh, the immovable throne of God in Ezekiel 1. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that even as Ezekiel was beside the river, he was beside the river and behold, he saw a whirlwind coming out of the north. Come on, God is taking us into the river. He's taking us into the place where there's no return, where we can't be on the sidelines anymore. Come on. Who wants to jump off the shore into the deep waters? Woo, into the deep waters like Ezekiel beside the river of Kabar. Woo, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you, God, that we're jumping deep tonight. Lord, we're jumping, Father, in the depths of your heart. Lord, the depths of your river. God, for a holy, Father, generation, Lord, to rise up, God, a royal priesthood. Lord, we thank you, God, that we are your priests. Lord, that we are your kings. And Jesus, we thank you for your blood, Lord. Ooh, the blood. Oh, Jesus, that speaks a better word over us now, Lord. It speaks, Father. Lord, perfect love, perfect righteousness. Lord, the power of your blood. God, I thank you, Lord, that your blood, God, breaks every yoke. Father, it removes every disease. Lord, every hindrance, God. Oh, when the blood was shed on Calvary, Woo, the earth begin to shake. Jesus, we thank you that the earth is shaking of the rising of the sons of God. Who the rising of the sons and the daughters, Lord. Oh, come on, look to him tonight. Just look to the throne. Who look to the one who's seated on the throne. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, we love you. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We thank you. Oh, that your eyes are like flames of fire. Oh, come on. Just look at his eyes right now. Just look at him and let him, let his heart, let his eyes pierce your being right now. Oh, shekarabayata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. More, God, more, Lord. Oh, let your breath, Lord, blow. Let your breath, Jesus, blow in this place, God. Oh, release the winds, Lord, right now. Holy Spirit, the winds of the Spirit, God, in this place, Lord, the, the, the turning, Father, the stirring, Lord. Whoo, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we look to the one who's in the midst of the whirlwind tonight. Oh, Jesus, we just want you, Lord. We want you to come, and Lord, to manifest your glory, to manifest 
your face, Lord. That we would see your face. That we would see your beauty. And Lord, that we would be caught up, God, in a place with you, Lord, in the realm of the Spirit. Oh, with the Holy Ghost. Oh, Holy Spirit, we love you. Oh, Holy Spirit, we thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing in our lives, God, that you're bringing us, Lord, into the perfection of Jesus. Lord, you're refining us, God. Lord, in, in the fire. Oh, come on, God is raising up golden vessels in this place that are going to carry the glory of God. They're going to carry his glory. They're going to carry his presence. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Ooh, we thank you, God, that we are your vessels. Oh, that we're vessels tonight, Lord, filled with oil. Come on, who wants the upgrade? God is draining out the old, and he's releasing the fresh and the new right now. Who the new fresh oil coming from his presence. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Who for the administration of the Spirit right now. And God, that the angels would begin to move in this place, Lord, releasing the oil of God. Come on, begin to go. Come on, begin to look to him even more. Just set your gaze on him right now. Oh, we're ascending to the hill of the Lord. Oh, Jesus, purify us, Lord. Purify us even more, God. Cleanse us. Lord, cleanse us, Jesus. Holy, 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 holy God. Oh, we thank you for your holiness. Oh, we thank you, Father, for your holiness, Lord, being released in this place. Lord, your holy glory. Oh, Jesus. Who I feel the weighty presence of the Lord coming in right now. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord. For Isaiah, Lord, would he prophesy, Lord, that arise and shine. Oh, for the light has come. Who in the glory of the Lord is rising upon us. God, we thank you for the Kabod glory tonight. Father, we thank you, Father, that, that your face is shining upon us, that you're releasing, the Lord, that your heavy weighty presence in this place. The Lord, for the priesthood anointing. God, even when the priests they couldn't even stand to minister, Lord, because your presence was so thick, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Release, oh, release that Jesus in this place. Oh, Jesus, we want to know you. We want to know your heart, Lord, even more. Lord, we want to see you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for that song of Solomon realm, Lord, that intimacy. Lord, that we would be intimate with our King tonight. Oh, Jesus, that we would step in, Lord, into the banqueting hall of the King of glory. Who that you would release garments, Lord, fresh, fresh wedding garments, God. Lord, would come upon us to dine with you, Lord, to sit with you at the table. Come on, we're in a season right now that God is laying out the table of the Lord and we're coming to him. We're coming to dine with him. Come on, he said in the book of Revelation that anyone who hears my voice when I knock and they open up the door, he says, I will come into them and I'm gonna dine with them. Oh, Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, that we're gonna dine with you tonight. Lord, we're gonna eat with you. We're gonna drink with you. Jesus, we're going to be in your presence. Oh, we're going to see your face, Lord. Hear your voice. Oh, feel your glory. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Release the person of the Lord tonight, Lord. We thank you for the spirit of the Lord resting upon us, God. Resting and remaining upon us. Jesus, we love you. Oh, Rabakande Arabayotoy. Oh, we want to eat of the bread, Lord. We want to drink of the fresh wine that you're pouring out tonight, God. And we just say, have your way. Come on, we're going up to the mountain of God tonight. We're going to go into the mountain that's burning with fire. Who where he is. So, Father, we just thank you for that realm. And we bless you, Jesus, tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Come on, can we clap our hands and give Jesus a praise tonight? Come on, lift up your voice. Oh. 
we enter in with thanksgiving and with praise. We've stepped into the courts of the King. Jesus, we are here, we're here for you. We've gathered in this place to honor you and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Come on, we tell them, Jesus, we are here, we're here for you. We'll say that again. Oh, Jesus, we are here, we're here for you. We've gathered in this place to honor you. Oh, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Jesus, we are here, here for you. your praises rise and open your heart loose the song inside oh let us rejoice let us magnify his name hey come on let's tell them say jesus we are here we're here for you we've cast Praise, let your shout arise. For our God redeemed us with his mighty power. Oh, let's sing together, let us magnify his name. Ah, we're here for you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we are here, we're here for you. Gathered in this place to honor you and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Jesus, we are here, here for you. Yeah, we're here for you. to worship you in spirit and in truth. Yeah, Jesus, we are here, here for you. Come on, just open your hands to him tonight. Lord, we declare from the start tonight, we are here for Jesus. We are here to worship you, to give you the glory that is due your name. And God, we thank you for the blood that Jesus shed that gives us boldness and access to the very presence of God. And Lord, we come tonight not with timidity, not with shame, but God, we come with confidence, with boldness into your throne room and celebrate before you, Jesus. <laughs> Can you just say that? Just say, Jesus, 
Your blood has washed me clean. And I'm coming to you freely tonight. We come to you freely tonight. We come to you freely by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, Jesus, we are here live for you. <laughs> Tell them, we've gathered in this place to honor you. You alone to worship you in spirit and in truth. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, we are here, here for you. One more time we say, Jesus, we are here, we're here for you. Come on. We've gathered in this place to honor you and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Jesus, we are here. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Giving you praise. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. But I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, it may look like I'm surrounded. Oh, come on, somebody say, This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my how I fight my battles. I'm going to give you praise. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how, this is how, giving the Lord his praise. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm Come on. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Nothing we'd rather do than just to give you glory and worship you in this place. You are awesome in your sanctuary, Lord. You are awesome in your house. I like how David said, I, I looked for you in your sanctuary to behold your power and your glory. Did anyone come to behold the power and the glory of Jesus tonight? Come on, we're not coming into a powerless room. We're coming into the power, the power of our King and our God, amen? The power of his presence. And so Lord, we, we worship you with faith tonight and we just thank you that you are here to release breakthrough. You are here, no matter what, the circumstances, no matter what the world says, no matter what's going on, we put our anchor in Jesus. Ah. 
We put our anchor in you, Lord. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. <laughs> but they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. Yep. We've heard that there is no way. We've heard the tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. Yeah, we believe it. So much power in your name. Move the unmovable. Break the unbreakable. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. Yeah. We know, we know that hope is never lost. For there is still an empty grave. God, we believe no matter what. There is power in your name. Come on. So much power in your name.
There's nothing that you can't do, God. Oh, there's nothing that you can't do. And so we say, you said it, I believe. You said it, <laughs> it is done with faith. You said, so I believe it. You said, it is done. We say, you said, I believe it. You said, it is done. We say, you said it. And I believe it, you said it, so it is done. We're standing on your word, God. We're standing on the word that made the world. We're standing on the word. We're standing. The flowers may fall and the grass it withers, yeah. but the word of our God stands forever, forever. The grass may fall and wither, yeah. but the word of our God stands forever, forever. You release faith tonight, Lord. You give each one a measure of faith. And we pull up our anchors and everything of fear. And we cast our anchors behind the veil where we draw near. Oh, oh, oh. break the fear. We break the fear tonight with the goodness of God. <laughs> with the goodness of God. We've got a good God, and He's come to give life. He's come to give life. Oh, and so we break fear with his goodness. Oh, you are good. In the morning, I'll sing you are good. In the evening, I'll sing you are good. You are good to me. Oh, we'll sing that you are good. In the morning, I'll sing you are good. In the evening, I'll sing you are good. You are good to me. Every time my heart will see you are good. In the morning I'll sing you are good. In the evening I'll sing you are good. You are good to me.
on getting better. You keep on getting better. Yeah. You keep on. Every time I see another glimpse of you. Oh, oh. You keep on getting better. 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 time we sing, we're singing that you are good. In the morning I'll sing you are good. In the evening I'll sing you are good. You are good to me. Thank you tonight. I just see like the clouds uh, parting and just the, the sun breaking through and it's his goodness. I feel this tonight. The goodness of God breaking through the clouds of fear and the clouds of despair. <laughs> oh. Lord, thank you tonight. It's that song that they sang when the glory came. For he is good. And his love endures forever. God, you're good for all of eternity. Yeah. You'll be good, 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 good to me. Yeah. To me. Yeah. You'll And the sun keeps shining, the sun keeps shining, even when the clouds come. The sun keeps shining, the sun keeps shining, even when the clouds come, even when the clouds come. I know you're still shining, I know you're still good. I know God of the breakthrough, breaking through. I know it's in your nature. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yes, you are good. You're good.
to say what the psalmist said that no one whose hope is in you God will ever be put to shame <laughs> you are unchanging Lord he said no one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame no one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame I know that no one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame no no one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame yeah it's no one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame i know it's true no one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame yeah no one whose hope is in you will ever be put put our hope in you no one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame no one whose hope is in you will ever be yeah 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 no one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame i say it again no one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame in you will ever be put to shame no one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame yeah yeah no one whose hope is in you will ever be put that's the word that's the scripture no one whose hope is in you <laughs> yeah, yeah. no one whose hope is in you Cause you're working it together No one whose hope is in you Will ever be put to shame Oh, no one whose hope is in you Yeah, no one whose hope is in you Will ever be put Working it together for my good It's what you do you're working it together for my good it's what you do now yeah yeah you're working it together for my good yeah, yeah. it's working it together for my good because you are good good oh you are good Yes, you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, good. Come on, if you believe it tonight, give the Lord a shout, come on. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just love that scripture. David said, no one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame. You know, that's not my opinion, right? That's God's word. <laughs> oh. oh, man, I love that because that means 
that, that Jesus, he, he promises, Romans 8, 28, to work everything together for the good of those who love him. That means, that means, watch this, that the devil is just a pawn in the greater plan of God for your life. That means doesn't matter what the devil tries to throw at you, God works something really, really good out of it in your life. I hope that puts faith in someone's heart today. I'm telling you, he's working it all together. Jesus. Working it together for my good. Yeah, you're working it together for my good. No matter what pain, no matter what trial, no matter what surrounds me, you're working it, you're working it. No matter what fears, no matter what fire, no matter what circumstances I find myself in, you're working it together. Yes, you're working it together, making something good, <laughs> making something good. <laughs> it's like we're going in the kitchen going like, Jesus, what are you making in here? <laughs> He's taking all your trials, all your warfare, all the stuff that's come against you. What are you making, Jesus? I'm making something good. I'll make it something real, real good. And I'm working it together for your good tonight. He said, I'm making something good. I'm working it together. I'll make it something for your good. Oh, I'll put you back together. How could you do it, Lord? You put it on the camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. You put it on the camera for my good and for your glory. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. And so we just lift our hands to you tonight, Lord, and we just, we confess our dependence on you. We confess our surrender to you. We confess our deep need for you. And we confess our trust. Now we say, oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you now. How I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. I'm calling on the God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the lowly. know if you all things are possible I'm calling on the God of David who made a shepherd boy courageous I may not face Goliath but I've got my own child oh God my God 
We remember the way that you carried on and fulfilled your word. We remember the way you carried us before and you keep on doing it, Lord. You heard your children then. You hear your children now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You answered prayers back then, and you will answer now. You are the same God. You are the same. Yeah. You were providing then. You are providing now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You moved in power then. God moved in power now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You were a healer then. Set our minds on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness, and your great love is never changing, it's never failing. Your great love finds me where I am, 
finds me right where I am. You're the God who sees me. You're the God who hears us. You find me where I am. And your love, your love never fails. Never fails, no. Lord, tonight we just I take a few moments just to meditate on your faithfulness. Meditate on your love and kindness. We remember, Lord. We remember how you called Abraham and brought him to a place you were going to show him. We remember how you gave him a promise that you would bless all the nations through. We remember, God, how you prospered your people in Egypt, God, and then you rescued them from slavery. We remember, God. We remember Jesus, the Passover lamb. <laughs> we remember your faithfulness through the desert. We remember. We remember. I just feel, let's take a few moments and just feel like we just need to just, we'll let the music play, but remember and meditate on his wonders. Meditate on his miracles. Meditate on his faithfulness. You showed us you were the healer. We remember when you broke through in power and brought your touch. We remember when you carried us through. Like David said, my comfort and my trials is this, my comfort and suffering is this, your promise preserves my life, <laughs> your promise preserves my life. I remember when I remember when you broke through with your love. And we meditate on your wonders, Lord. We meditate on your wonders.
feel the Lord is like rewriting some of our stories today. It's like we remembered it one way, but Jesus is like rewriting the whole thing tonight. Oh. I think it's so powerful when you read through the book of Hebrews in chapter 11. We know all the stuff that Abraham did, but when God remembered him, he just said, by faith, Abraham brought his son. By faith, he, made a, he, he rewrote the story and looked at him through the lens of the blood of Jesus and said, all these guys full of faith, these people of faith, Jacob did this by faith. And all these people were regular people just like us who had flaws and failures. But when God chose to remember them, he, wrote, he rewrote the story. These are my people of faith. Great faith. Abraham is the father of faith. <laughs> but he's the one who lied twice. <laughs> I'm just saying, I feel like the Lord is rewriting some of our stories and shifting how we remember it. Shifting how we see in our past. Come on, somebody. Lord, we honor that tonight. We thank you for that. We thank you for the rewriting. You see us with faith. You see us through the blood of Jesus. You see us as overcomers. You see us not as we see ourselves. But God, thank you. Tonight, you're releasing that mirror of the Lord that we would behold as in a mirror the glory and see ourselves truly as you've made us. Truly what you accomplished for us at the cross. We look to you, Jesus, in the mirror of the Lord. And we're looking to you. We're looking in a mirror. We thought we see us, but we see you. We thought we see us, but we keep on seeing Jesus. <laughs> We keep on seeing Jesus. You're rewriting our story. And you're putting in faith. You're rewriting our past. Through the blood of Jesus. You're rewriting our history. Through the eyes of faith. And we're looking at you. Looking at today you are holy you are holy we say to you you are Worthy is the Lamb. 
fixed on the Lamb, our eyes fixed on the One, the Holy One, Holy One, yeah, our eyes fixed on the Lamb, our eyes fixed on
eyes fixed on the Father, we worship you tonight. And Lord, we thank you for the anointing of breakthrough, God. Come on, I just felt like, even as Andrew just went into this last song, that there's a breaker anointing that's coming here. Even as we're worshiping, listen, if you need breakthrough, just come up here to the front. God's going to release the breaker anointing. Oh. Come on, when... God starts to break in and he starts to break loose. He will break every chain. He will break every stronghold. He will remove everything that stands in between you and what he's called you to do and where he's called you to go. Come on, this is a birthing your prophetic destiny weekend. And I'm telling you that many people are going to come in from all over the United States and even different places in the world for this. And, and I feel like even right now on this Thursday night, there's a breaker anointing that he wants to release. Come on, I want you just to lean in this, and it's our high praise when we lift up his name. 
it releases the breaker. And so we come right now, Father, and we worship you, and we thank you for the breakthrough anointing. we thank you right now that Lord chains break in Jesus name Lord I thank you God that there's even glass ceilings that are breaking listen where many of you have felt like you've been bumping up against limitation even right now we break the limitation in the name of Jesus and Father I thank you that this is a new season of accelerated grace this is a new season Lord of the wind of God behind our backs pushing us forward pushing us higher Come on, I just see a whole bunch of eagles. And I see where, where, where it felt like there was a wind of opposition that was pushing people back. It's like you would take one step forward uh, and then you'd end up two steps back. And it's one step forward and two steps back. And before you know it, instead of making progress, it feels like you've been blown backwards. Listen, I just felt the Lord shift the winds. And I'm telling you, he's silencing right now the warfare. He's silencing right now the opposition. But now I see the winds of the Father's love getting underneath our wings. And causing us to soar, causing us to grow, causing us to accelerate. So we release the winds of heaven right now. And we thank you, God, for the eagles that are going to soar on your presence.
Just like the eagle soars the highest of all of the birds, the closest to the sun. Come on, he's taking us higher into the levels of sonship, into the levels of intimacy with God. Come on, the spirit of the Lord catching us up. Literally, for some of you, catching you up. Not just catching us up, but catching you up with acceleration. <laughs> Whoo! Taking us above the clouds Taking us high Taking us high Above the clouds Above, above, taking us high, taking us high, above the clouds, above the clouds, taking us high, taking us high, above the clouds, above. I'm reminded of Abraham when God said to him, go on top of the mountain. And as far as your eye can see to the north and the south and the east and the west, he said, I've given it to you as an inheritance. Come on, how many know that when God wants to show you your destiny, he doesn't take you into the valley. He takes you up higher. And I just feel like right now that's what he's doing. He's releasing higher level vision. He's releasing a higher level anointing to soar on the wings of the Spirit, but also that you would start to get a glimpse of something greater, that you would start to see things from heaven's perspective, from an aerial view, from your Father's view. Come on, just close your eyes. Just a few more minutes. Just let him show you. Let him show you what's on the horizon. Let him show you what's coming in this next season. Come on, we're going to peek around the corner in the spirit right now. And we're going to start to gaze at some things that he wants to do. Standing on Zion 
can see the horizon as we're standing on Zion. Yeah, we're standing on Zion. We can see the horizon. Look a little further, dig a little deeper. We're standing on Zion. We're standing on Zion. Look in the horizon. Look a little further, dig a little deeper on Mount Zion. We're standing on Zion. Looking at the horizon. Look a little further, dig a little deeper here on the mountain. On the mountain of the Lord. Come on, just like the great bald eagle sets up its eagle's nest, often on the highest point or the highest pinnacle of a mountain. Come on, tonight he's taking us into the eagle's nest. He's taking us to that point. He's taking us to the highest vantage place that you can stand, that you can sit. Come on, how many know that it tells us how to get there in Psalm 24? It says, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand on his mountain? Who may stand in his holy place? But those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul, idolatry come on I'm telling you just (laughs) we're in the eagle's nest under the shadow of the almighty oh it's the birthing place Where the eggs begin to hatch. <laughs> Come on, he's going to hatch some new things in our lives. Woo, we're in that eagle's nest tonight, I'm telling you, I see it. We're going into the prophetic moments of the Lord. <laughs> ha. Under the shadow. You know what's beautiful about that is you don't have to do anything. You just got to get under there. Woo, let him hover over you. <laughs> so, Lord, here we are. Say, have your way and birth what you want to birth tonight, God. secret place of God and you lift us up higher than every enemy you exalt our heads above our enemies and we hide ourselves within the wings of God and we hide ourselves within his secret place and your hiding place and you put new things in us and the revelation it comes alive here in your place and your word comes alive and the new thing breaks through into reality Because what we've seen in the spirit and what we've seen in your realm is breaking through to this one. Oh, can you tell? It's breaking through to this place. 
It's breaking through to this realm. It's been birth in the spirit, but breaking through now. Breaking through now. <laughs> to the here and now. And to the place you see. From the secret place, everything you need, everything you need, in the secret place. Sometimes the most powerful thing you can do is just wait in his presence. Come on, how do we shift circumstances that are outside of our control? I'll tell you how you do it. You get under the shadow of the Almighty and you live in the secret place. When you're in the secret place, you're hidden from the enemy. <laughs> That's why it's a secret place. <laughs> so Holy Spirit, we thank you that we're hidden in Christ. And because we're hidden in Christ Jesus, we have access to the Father. We have access to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, three in one. <laughs> Come on, he's cracking some things open right now.
Come on, just lift that up tonight. up tonight. on at the count of three I want you to yell Yeshua one two three come on Come on, I just saw it. We went into the eagle's nest tonight. Into that realm where God was birthing things. Come on, some of you came in an egg and now you're leaving an eagle. Come on, you can leave the shell at the door, she says. A couple chickens ran out. <laughs> Woo! Come on, how many know that if you wanna if you wanna soar with the eagles, you gotta get away from the turkeys, right? Because the turkeys can't fly. <laughs> They're nice looking, but guess what? We know what happens to them. <laughs> gobble, gobble. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ain't none of you getting eaten up by the devil. Come on, you're an eagle. You, you're getting to those snake snacks. Hey. You get way up, uh, way up in the heavens and you start to see down. Come on, we ain't, we ain't heard nothing on that for a while, have we? Have you guys been around Fire and Glory for a few years? You know, that's, a, that's, a inside, uh, that's an inside joke with Andrew Hopkins. <laughs> One night we got off into the spirit and he was singing about snake snacks. You know how the, how many know that the, the devil, listen, he's going to be snake snacks in this season to the eagles because we're going to snatch back our destinies and we're going to see the glory of God come. And I, I'm, I'm excited, you guys. Listen, welcome to the fire and glory outpouring. Uh, this is night 1660. I was not planning on doing these announcements, but you know what? We got caught up in the spirit, so here we go. Uh, but uh, I want to encourage you guys tomorrow morning, we start our birthing your prophetic.
Prophetic Destiny Lab. It's going to start at 10 a.m. Uh, we're going to have four sessions tomorrow. We're going to have uh, a 10 a.m. session. Then we're going to have a, uh, a second morning session. We'll take a lunch break. We'll come back. We'll do two sessions in the afternoon. And then tomorrow night, Fire and Glory Outpouring as normal. I'll be preaching. Uh, and, and so uh, both Samuel and I are going to be preaching in the daytime lab. If you guys want to come to that, you do have to register. It's a school. Uh, and, and so we're, we're excited about that. And then on Saturday, we have the same thing. Uh, well, it's a little bit different. On Saturday morning, starts at 10 again. Uh, we're going to have uh, three teaching sessions, but then we're going to have a question and answer time and impartation time. Uh, and then it, Saturday night, uh, Samuel Robinson will be throwing down at Fire and Glory. And so I want to encourage you guys uh, to get registered, come out. If you want to register, you can go to, I believe it's ElishaLabs.com. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a little link there. You can register and it'll give you a ticket that you can either print out or I think they'll have it in the automated system uh, when you've registered. And uh, listen, if there's someone that really, 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 really wants to go and you just cannot afford it, you can talk to Jen uh, about that. And, uh, you know, we can we can see what we can do there. But um, anybody, anybody coming, anybody registered for that? Come on, I know we got people that are coming in from all over the place. And, uh, you know, we, we got uh, our, our New England friend is in the house. Come on, somebody. Uh, anybody else come from out of state, you guys? Anyone? Where at? Who's? Oh, yeah, that, that's New England. I, I just bunch them all together because, well, she knows what I'm talking about. But anyway, I'm actually going to be in New England next week preaching. Uh, and, and so uh, I'm excited about that. And uh, listen, what else we got going? I got to look at this. I don't normally do this. This Saturday, there's no outreach because we're doing the lab, but we'll do that next week. Uh, and, and you guys, there's been some powerful stuff happening on those outreaches. I mean, wild stuff, actually. We'll, we'll do some testimonies on Sunday night just due to time. Last week, we didn't get them up because we just got so caught in the spirit. If you were here, uh, last week was like a big party. I mean, seriously, we had our friends from England. And uh, I, I love that we had the, the guys from the UK, from England here, and they're drunker than the Americans. Like, that's very rare, you guys. Usually you go there and they're drinking their they're drinking their tea with their pinky like you know little biscuit but these guys are they're they're actually from India so that's why you know what I mean like they they bypass that thing if there's anybody watching from England you know we love you and uh, if you're watching us I already know that you you got the Holy Ghost so uh, also I want to make mention Monday April 24th at 7:30 p.m. come on Miranda Nelson is going to be hosting her Women of the Spirit meeting. Uh, and, and so listen, all the ladies, you are invited, I believe, is that this Monday coming up? So uh, anyway, get the word out, come out, it's going to be good. Uh, you know, you guys always have your feast and then me and the guys have our feast. It's, I don't know, you guys are eating better than we are, but we just eat like barbecue. But um, anyway, uh, we, let's see, what else we got? Missions, Malawi, come on. If anybody wants to go on a mission trip, Malawi for June uh, 1st through, uh, is that right? Okay, missions coordinator, she's got it. So when? June? Okay, June 5th through the 12th. Come and be with us. It's going to be awesome. Uh, last one. Uh, let's see. We got the women's conference. Come on, somebody. The full women's conference, June 1st through 3rd. And uh, you guys don't want to miss this. It's going to be awesome. You can register. I, I believe the conference is free, but then they have a luncheon you can go to as well. That's going to be good. You have to register for that. So come out for it. It's going to be great. And uh, I, I already know, you know, uh, sometimes some of us husbands are hiding out in the back uh, in, in the actual sound booth. And you know what? It's all good because it's like a little embassy that we can hang out in. Uh, that's what we got. That's what we got told last year. We're like, you cannot come in the building. We're like, we didn't come in. We're just back there. You know what I mean? But, you know, when, when last year when, when Mama Cindy was preaching, we, we were like put a little straw over and be like, <sighs> but it's guys, we're not allowed in here. I'm just letting you know. I mean, no, that's a good thing, right? <laughs> come on. We, we need to let, let the ladies have ladies time. And, uh, and so come out. That's going to be good. All right. I think I'm done with my announcements or uh, I actually did pretty good. Uh, the other day I got so, uh, so messed up I couldn't read, but um. I'm excited, you guys. Sam's going to pre preach tonight. 
Yeah, and we're going we're gonna to get to that here in a moment. Before we do, uh, we're going to receive an offering, and uh, you guys know where it goes. goes into missions, goes into the outpouring. Pray, obey, hear the Lord, ask him what you should do, and just be radically obedient to him. And, and you know what? Those are the recipes for miracles, you guys. And so if you'd like to do that and, and partner with us, there's envelopes in front of your seats. Grab one. You can make out checks to E, Rev, or Elisha Revolution. Those that are watching online, there'll be a screen that comes up right now. Uh, it just gives you some different ways that you can give. Uh, you can, you can, you know, hit or you can text revival to the number that you see right there on the screen, one two zero six eight five nine nine four zero five. You can go to lifestrevolution.com, click the donate button there. You can mail your checks or gold bricks to there. Uh, and and so uh, anyway, we're we're excited. Listen, some of you that are watching online, uh, you know, you can give as well. And if there's anybody that wants to sponsor an entire crusade, we would let you do that. And so uh, you know. Uh, could you imagine like Sammy talks about, you sponsor an entire city in heaven, Poof, just one city all at once. Uh, and, and so, uh, but hey, good news, we're almost done fundraising for Malawi now, you guys. So that'll be three this year that have been, you know, uh, taken care of and knocked out. Can we give Jesus a big hand? And then a few more after that, and we'll be done with all of them, you know, and, and, and so I'm excited about that. And uh, uh, so take a moment, pray, obey when you're ready, come on up and you can give, and, uh, and we're going to get Samuel up here, and we'll see what's going to happen. being sown tonight, those that are sown online, Lord, those that have been given in this season, Father, we just bless right now the finances of your people, and we thank you, God, that, Lord, we get to partner with you in the kingdom of God. Your word says that when we sow, we reap, and so, Lord, I pray that you would release the reapings of God in this room, Lord, that, Father, there be heavenly visitation encounters, Lord, that, Father, even as we're in a birthing your prophetic destiny weekend, that, Lord, you would release the finances, Lord, necessary for people to birth what you called them to do. And where you've called them to go, Lord, release the wisdom, the strategy, the blueprints for it. And everybody in this place said, amen. amen. Come on, somebody. Well, uh, listen, you guys, I want to just uh, encourage you once again, come to this lab. It's going to be good. Uh, and, 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 you know, really, it was Sammy. He heard the Lord last time he was here. He told me, the Lord said, we got to do a lab. And I said, let's do it, man. His, uh, you know, he, he told me, he goes, I want to share stuff that I've never shared before. And so I like that. You know what I mean? I need a new book. I was like, oh, let's do it. No, I'm playing, dude. <laughs> you know, I actually got five new books. I wrote five books during COVID and haven't released one yet because the Lord didn't let me. But guess what? He gave me the go to release three of them now. 
So in the next couple of months, you're going to see them start coming out. And so I'm excited. One of them is all uh, the seven spirits of God. There's a couple others, uh, you know, one on the kingdom. And, uh, and, and, and there's also one on, uh, you know, revelation gifts. And, and so anyway, uh, we're, we're going to be releasing those things soon. It'll be good. And uh, uh, enough about that. I don't know. I'm just yakking at this point. But, uh, but here's the deal, though. How many love Sam Robinson? Come on. He's got an amazing... Uh, ministry, you know, I, I just love Sammy. He's a real deal prophet of the Lord. In fact, he just got commissioned uh, as an HIM prophet, you know, just at our last week's Global Summit, uh, you know, with with, uh, with Chan and Bill Johnson and, uh, you know, uh, Patricia King and all these ones that, that, you know, prayed and set him into place of an office. He was already moving in that, uh, you know, uh, uh, but how many know there's something said when uh, when when you have apostles and, and you, you get that commissioning over you? And so so I love it because he's always been at a high level, but I know that things are just going to go higher because uh, how many know that when you walk in that uh, the, the New Testament model of alignment, it shifts things in the realm of the spirit. And, uh, and, and so anyway, I always told him, you know, because we lived together before Moran and I got married. And I would, if, if you ever did anything crazy and got me mad, I'd be like, you son of a prophet, because his dad's Charlie Robinson. Yeah, man, his dad's a real deal prophet, you know, and, and so, uh, but but I love it, though, because Sammy, he has the double portion, and uh, he's got a ministry called Voice of Revival Ministries. Come on, welcome him as he comes tonight. Amen. Come on. Come on, come on. Can we just give Jesus a shout of praise? Oh, it's so good to be here. How many were here last week? Wasn't that off the charts? Oh my goodness, Rakesh and Preethi, I, man, I got plastered in the Holy Ghost. And, uh, whoo, <laughs> I, I got to say this, if you haven't registered yet uh, for the school, you need to come this week, because the Lord spoke to me, and I told this to Jeremy, and I said, listen, I said, God doesn't just want you to have prophetic words. There's a lot of people that have prophetic words. It's time to see your words come to pass. And so we're going to be teaching on literally how to see, step by step, of how to see your words come to pass. Because if I could just say this right now, I think one of the, the problems sometimes in the prophetic like, movement is that we, we love our prophetic words, but we don't know how to see that which is spirit manifest in the natural. And God wants to teach us how to do this. And one of the things I'm going to be showing you is literally how step by step, how to not just have those words, walk those words out, but how many also want to see those words get funded in this season? Okay, that's half of us. We'll get there. But see, a vision that comes from heaven will be funded by heaven. And so I want to encourage those in the room, those that are watching online, listen, you need to join because God wants to teach you how to tap into those supernatural resources. Because when a word's released, it's not just on you to do it. Sometimes when you get a word, I don't know about you, but I, I get a word and I'm like, okay, how's this going to happen? How many believe when you get a word, you're partnering with the Father, and you're partnering with heaven. I want to tap into those resources, those connections, that supply, that oil, that favor, where all of a sudden God opens up doors that you could not open up for yourself. How many want some of those doors to start to open up and the favor to flow? Because here's the thing. This is where I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop a prophetic word today. Okay, you ready for this? You're going to want to join this. I'm telling you right now. Some of you are going to join as we talk right now. Here's the deal. Here's what the Lord spoke to me today on the front seat. You ready for this? He said, you have 11 days to step into the new season. Oh, yeah. Some of you are like, I'm not ready. Well, too bad. <laughs> 11 days. The Lord told me May 1st is where things are changing. This May, May 1st, this May, things are changing. This May, May 1st, 11 days to step into your new season. And I said, God, I'm freaking out. I told this to, to Jeremy. I'm like, Lord, 11 days. He said, 11 days. 11 days. I'm saying, Lord, 11 days. He said, May 1st. He said, May 1st, everything's changing. May 1st, get ready. Tell the people, May 1st, you're stepping into something completely brand new right here and right now. Where we're going, we've never been before. There's a fresh favor. There's a fresh increase. But you got to grab a hold of it now. now I'm going to show you in the world, this is wild. I'm going to teach you today, and, and I, I got to say this, by the way, first and foremost, I love the Fire and Glory family. It's so good to be here. Anybody that's hungry for Jesus is family, amen? And uh, I, you guys have been soaking in all these years. I'll tell you this right now, all of that's about to manifest in this next season. 
I love what David said. You know what David said? I would have fainted had I not believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Is there anybody here still believing that we're going to see his goodness in the land of the living? See, I, I was feeling that in prayer today. I felt like the Lord said, I want you to eat of my goodness. Oh, shakara, ba, ba, ba. Some of you are going to eat of his goodness. Oh, I want to, I want to, how many want to eat of the honeycomb of heaven tonight? I mean, you're going to taste and see that the Lord is good. If you've had a sour week, you need to just get some honey on you. Lord, we thank you for the honey. We thank you for the promises of Lord. See, his promises are sweet. See, some of you got to remind yourself, we we're doing this in worship, we were reminding ourselves of the goodness of the Lord. Lord, I remind myself of the goodness. I taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Lord, we taste and see today that you are good. Like David said, see, not that he would hear about the goodness, he would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. There's a lot of people that are content for a testimony or you read a book. No, God wants you to have the testimony, you to have the book of breakthrough in this season. Somebody's got to contend to say, God, here I am. I'm not just taking up space. I'm going to see revival. I'm going to see your goodness. It's going to overflow in my life, in my family, in my business. I'm going to be the one. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. I'm going to do it, God. And if someone else doesn't want it, take it. Take it. I'm going to take it. Listen, some of you are like, oh, I don't know. Well, listen, that's more for me. See, some of you got to get greedy in the spirit. I mean it. you got to get hungry in the spirit. See, a lot of people that leave talents on the table, God doesn't want you to leave talents on the table. He wants you to take those. Lord, I thank you for all those things. If someone else doesn't want it, I take it. People ask, how do you have ridiculous favor? You know what the Lord told me? He said, it's not just your favor. You've taken other people's favor. Oh, some people do not like that. They're like, what do you mean? I'll tell you this right now. God will never waste. So when there's unused favor, he'll give it to somebody else. See, this is where, can I tell you, part of the unused favor is, you know what it is? When you have prophetic words and you don't access them. Because when a word is released... There's an oil and a favor to see that word come to pass. But there's a lot of people content just to have a prophetic word and they never become the prophetic word. Come on, somebody. Jesus, listen. Jesus, John chapter 1, he was the word made flesh. He was that which was prophesied, revealed. How many want to live, not just have a word, but be the word? Come on, somebody, listen. You're, when people look at you, they say, man, there is a testimony of Jesus that's on you. When I look at you, I see the prophetic promise of Jesus Christ on your life. What you're doing is so supernatural. It's so amazing. There's going to be people that are going to taste of your words. Ooh, you know, the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire of the righteous comes to pass, it is a tree of life. How many want to be a big, fat, abundant tree? You want to be a full tree. I'm not talking about a scrawny little tree. I'm talking about a big, fat, full tree where people get around you. They start to eat of the goodness of God on your life. I mean, people get over you. They start to, you start sharing testimonies and people are like, shock out about, I just received. Why? Because those testimonies bring life. See, the problem is people are trying to give life. They got no life. They got no testimony. They got no prophetic words coming to pass. And this is the, the whole deal, all smoke, no fire. But see, with the prophetic word, there's a beginning. This is good. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. A lot of people just celebrating the beginning. God doesn't just want you to have a beginning. He wants you also to have an end. That's why we're doing what we're doing. Why? Because time's short. I'm going to tell you this right now. 11 days. That's what I'm telling you. May 1st. Everything's changing. May 1st. Ooh, some of you, you, I mean this, you're going to be like, I'm doing this right now. Don't waste your time. May 1st, everything's changed. That's what the Lord told me, May 1st. And I said, Lord, I don't, I don't know if people are going to like that. He said, I don't care. I'm moving. May 1st, everything's changing. May 1st. Because here's what the Lord told me. Oh, he said, tell my people there is a blessing today that's found on their Perseverance. Is there anybody here today, you haven't given up like David said, I would have fainted had I not believed. 
I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Is there anybody here still believing, still not giving up, still believing that the best days are yet to come, still here pushing in for the glory of God? I'm telling you, God is about to honor your perseverance, and there's a blessing in your perseverance. And when you don't give up, whoo, there's breakthrough. Because there's a double portion that's going to about to fall on a generation that doesn't give up. My whole life has been filled, and I'm going to teach you this. My whole life has been filled. God showed me my whole life has been filled with blessings and breakthrough because I didn't give up. But see, there's a lot of people today right now that their strength has been waning and they're ready to give up. My word for you, friends, right now, you haven't come this far just to come this far. You haven't been brought to this place. You haven't sacrificed. You haven't sown just to get to this moment. But God's got a breakthrough for you tonight. That tonight is a night of breakthrough. Tonight, tonight, you're going to step through into the new season. Ooh. Man, if that doesn't excite you, I need to lay hands on you and raise you from the dead. Listen, if you've got your Bibles, I, I want to show you this is wild. It's a heavy word I'm about to share. If you've got your Bibles, turn with me to Revelation chapter 3. I saw it. Jeremy got up. I wasn't even going to speak on this. Jeremy got up, and all of a sudden I saw the door. The door was behind Jeremy. I said, God, what is that? He said, that's the doorway of your next season. Tell the people the door's open. Time to step in. But he says, there's a time limit on this thing. He said, step in. You got 11 days. I said, what? I said, God, 11 days. He said, 11 days. He said, tick tock, tick tock, 11 days. I said, well, okay. and, I, and I'm freaking out. And I said, God, where's this in the word? He said, Revelation chapter 3 right now. We're in this moment right now. I'm going to show you Revelation 3 verse 7. We're going to start here. Jesus is speaking to the church of Philadelphia. And it says this, it says, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things says he who is holy and he who is true. Now listen to this, he who has the key of David, say key of David. How many have heard Isaiah twenty two twenty two talking about the key of David that opens doors no man can close and close doors that no man can open? How many believe that God has that key and he can open up any door that he wants to at any time? And it says here, he who has the key of David, who opens and no one shuts. And shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. Someone say open door. How many believe we're in an hour of visitation? See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. How many believe what God's about to do, no religious devil can shut? How many believe that what God's about to do, there's going to be a breakthrough? Man, I'm, I love dropping my water. Lord, I thank you that there's a breakthrough that I'll tell you this, no political spirit can stop. There's a move of God that's coming to the earth today right now that's so massive. I'll say this right now. There's no force of man, no military, no individual that can stop what God's about to do. And it says this, look at this, to the church of Philadelphia, for you have little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. How many are ready for even your enemies to come back and say, you know what, you're right. See, the synagogue of Satan were Jews that were causing strife and persecution against Christians. How many believe that there's a move of God that's going to shut up the haters and the doubters and those that have been coming against are about to get swept in in this season? Woo. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Now, look at this. I've never read this until right now. It hit me. Because you've kept, kept my command to persevere. This is a word. Because you've kept my command to persevere. Persevere is not a choice. It's a command. You know what Jesus is commanding the church right now? You got to persevere. Well, things are hard. He knows it's hard. Well, I don't feel like I have a lot of strength. He mentions, hey, you might not have a lot of strength, but I got a word for you. Because you've kept my command and you haven't given up, even when it's tough, even when you don't feel like you have the breakthrough, there's a blessing in your perseverance. Because I've commanded you to persevere. And then he goes on to say the blessing. Here's my word. 
Hold on. <laughs> I also, listen, because you've kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. This is my word today. We have 11 days. This is what the Lord told me. May 1st, everything changes. There's a door open right now in the spirit to step into your new season. You'll either have an hour of revival or an hour of trial. I'm going to say that again. You will have an hour of revival or you will have an hour of trial. There's trial coming to the earth in this next season and you have two camps. Those who are going to walk in the goodness and the glory of God and those who are going to walk just like everybody in the world. And God is looking for those who will persevere, who will not give up and they're about to step into their next season and it's filled with revival. It's filled with the goodness and the glory of God. But you have a choice. You're commanded to persevere. See, there's a blessing in your perseverance. See, there's people that are trying to play it safe. I'm going to tell you this right now. If you try to play it safe in this season, you're going to go through the trial like everybody else. You don't want to go through that trial. You don't want to go through the next trial that's coming. There's a window of opportunity to step into your new season. In the midst of the trial, you'll be living in revival. How many want to be like Job 29, where Job talks about the butter and cream on his feet, that even the rock poured out oil? How many want to live it under this place of revival everywhere that you go, that even when the nations are shaking, you're moving in dimensions of the glory of God like we've never seen before. The hour of revival is upon us, but also the hour of great trial. There's a fear of the Lord in this season to not to miss an hour of visitation. Because I'm going to tell you this right now. With incredible light, things will also get incredibly dark. And here's the thing. Here's what the Lord told me. I said, God, why the short window? He said, the window's not short. It's been open for a while. But he said, my people have been asleep in an hour of visitation. But here's what he told me. I'm coming to wake up those who have persevered. When you don't give up, there's breakthrough. When you don't give up, there's opportunities to step into things that other people said no to, you'll receive. See, there's anointings. I'm going to just share this right now. This is why we need the teaching. We need to understand here today. God's not just interested in giving you a word. He wants you to see that word come to pass. Like we need the teaching and the revelation to step into this. Because once you step in, it opens up a world of favor, guys. My life has been filled with anointings and breakthroughs, not just because of who I am, but because of the perseverance. When you don't give up, you don't just get breakthrough for yourself. You pick up on other people's breakthrough. Do you know how many times when you read the stories of those who've gone before us, the revivalists, those that have made a way, have you ever heard Catherine Coleman share her story? Holy Spirit spoke to her and said, you weren't my first choice. I went to many other people to ask and they didn't take it. But she said yes. It's a word for you today. So today is the day to say yes to the Holy Spirit. Today's the day to say yes to the hour of visitation. Today's the day. I'm telling you, if you feel like you've been given up, you feel like, listen, you might, oh man, I feel dry. Listen, it's time to get on fire and step through the hour right now, that window of opportunity right here in the Spirit. Because when the world's going through trial, you're going to go through a revival. Because in the midst of darkness, people are going to see a great light. But I'll tell you this right now there'll be a portion of the church that will be in darkness. God wants you to step in. See, every move of God's an opportunity. It's always in a time of inconvenience. It's always when things are tough. I, that's why I love what, what you're talking about. David, he strengthened himself in the Lord. You know how David became David? He never gave up. Oh, he had all the promises in the world. You can have all the promises in the world. You can have someone anoint you. You can listen. You can have 10 shofars blowing over your head. It don't matter. <laughs> you can have every major prophet pro prophesying over you. You can have all the stuff that you want. You can have the picture perfect coronation service, but it means nothing if you don't understand perseverance. 
Because the truth is, it's not about how strong you start, it's about how strong you finish. I don't know about you, but I want my life to be a testimony of perseverance with God that no matter what we go through, we stand firm on the promise of God that he's good, that he never fails. See, we're talking today, this ministry is built on perseverance. See, Elisha revolution, can I say, say this right now? The Lord told me, he said, there's a releasing of a double portion. How many want a double portion today? Listen, you want a double portion in this season. You're not after just a little God bless me. You're after the double portion that God has for you. This is Elisha revolution. Elisha carried the double portion of Elijah. See, in purge, I'm, oh, I'm going to get right into this. I want to share a visitation. I had a visitation this afternoon. I had the craziest visitation ever. I'm in my hotel room. I'm, I'm praying in tongues. I'm like, shakara, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, I'll tell you this right now. I saw this face. Bald-headed prophet. He looked at me. He had like fire in his eyes. I said, Lord, what is this? He said, you're looking right now at Elisha. I'm in the room. I'm freaking out. I'm like, what? And I looked. And it was the wildest thing. He didn't look more anointed than you and I. But it was his eyes determined, fixed. Nothing could move him. And I looked and I said, God, what is this? He said, you want to know the key to Elisha's life? His perseverance. It's a word today. A lot of people think that someone's more spiritual or they're more anointed and they use all these things. But the truth is, usually it's because they have more perseverance. When other people say it's too hard, they give it another kick. When other people say, well, I'm just going to leave like Joshua, they stay an extra hour in the tent. Is there anybody here today? You don't want to leave the presence of God until you've met with God. I don't come for a service. I don't come for a message. I come to get touched by the glory of God. And there's a perseverance when you stay in the house of God. See, there's a generation that's about to receive the double portion. But it's not because they're more gifted. It's not because they're more anointed. It's because they've learned perseverance. When everybody walks away, I still want to be there. But I saw it in his eyes, man. I looked. It was complete commitment. And the Lord told me, he said, look at the lifestyle of Elisha. He said, here's your message today. He said, God's about to anoint a generation with a double portion. But he's like, they got to carry the same heart of perseverance. See, here's the problem. People give up way too quickly. I'll talk. Not this group, but there's a lot of people that all talk. Talk, 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 talk. But when it comes to it, you don't want to be a chicken when you're called to soar with eagles. A lot of clocking going out there. You know, here's the deal. You know when, you know when it's real? When the midst, when all hell goes against you, you're still standing. You know when it's real? Not when it's easy and you got things flowing. When all hell and Satan tries to tell you himself, just give up, it's not going to happen. When you can stand in the midst of the fires of hell going on all around you, you can say, you know what? It's hot out there, but it's hotter inside. There's a fire that's seven times hotter. There's a fire that's inside of me that's greater than anything going on out there. Listen, devil, you've given everything you've got, but I'm still standing. If you got your Bibles, I, I want to talk about three key things in the life of Elisha. Three key moments. Three keys to help you step into greater levels of perseverance today, which is going to unlock the double portion. Because how many believe from every generation we're called to move from glory to glory? See, we're in a massive season of transition. Massive. I don't know if you know this, but there's fathers and mothers. I'm going to tell you this right now. Are you ready for this? You watch in the next six months, you're going to see more fathers and mothers go home to be with the Lord. And we're in a time of great transition right now. But here's my word. It doesn't go from glory to glory. It goes from glory to glory. And there's a releasing of a double portion of that which our fathers and mothers have had. God is looking to release a double portion on you in this next season. But here, I want you to look at this. If you've got your Bibles, look at 1 Kings 19. This is awesome. 1 Kings 19. We're going to start in verse 19. It's the story, it's the beginning story of Elisha. And Elijah, how many, how many, by the way, just loved Elijah? 
Man, he was bad to the bone, man. I'm telling you. But how many know even Elijah got discouraged? And when Elijah was in the cave, discouraged, running away from Jezebel, you know what God says to Elijah? He said, hey, there's a couple of people you're going to anoint. One guy, his name's Elisha. There's a guy you're going to anoint. He's going to travel with you. He's going to be your intern. His name's Elisha. You're going to anoint him, and he's going to carry even more than what you got. You know what's funny about Elijah? Elijah knew. I'm going to read this right now. Elijah knew that Elisha was called to walk with him. But can I tell you this right now? He didn't make it easy. Look at this. No, look, 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 look at this. 1 Kings 19. Some of you, are, you're looking for an easy thing. Well, my mother or father, they didn't say yes to me. You said it once. Have you knocked five times, ten times, twenty times? Somebody's got to break through rejection to step into promise. I want to look, look at this. Look at this, 1 Kings 19, verse 19. So he departed from there and found Elisha. He already knew he was called to anoint Elisha. He found Elisha, the son of Shaphat. Look at this. Who was plowing the 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the 12. Then Elisha, Elijah passed by him. Someone say, passed by him. You know how many times I've been in meetings where men and women of God have passed by like a conference? Elijah is passing by him, and it says he threw his mantle on him. What would that be like? I'm doing my thing. I'm Elisha. I'm in the field, and the prophet comes over, and as he's passing me by, he puts his mantle on me. How many believe that wasn't like a little tickle? How many believe there was a spiritual experience that took place in that moment? How many believe that something got, he touched something that he had never touched before? Can I say this right now? When you come to events like this, you come to conferences, you come in the glory of God and speakers are speaking, all of a sudden your heart's getting stirred. All of a sudden you're feeling something you've never felt before. I'll tell you this right now. It is an opportunity to tap into something you've never had. You know what the problem is in Christian culture? We go from speaker to speaker to speaker to speaker to speaker to speaker and there's mantles that are touching you. But because we're so fixated on receiving a word, we never step into the mantle. And there's moments where people come and your heart gets stirred and it's an invitation to step into an encounter to receive a portion of what they carry. But you know what it is? Some of us, we're still looking for fast food Christianity. You're looking for your chicken McNuggets. Your little French fry, maybe you get a Sunday at the end. God said, I want to give you a steak. I want you to chew on this. I want you to, to get hungry for this. God's removing fast food Christianity in this season for your little buzz, your little fix, your little thing. He's about to touch you with the power and presence of God that's going to make you, listen, it's going to get you hungry for him and everything else is not going to matter. See, I've been touched by mantles. When you're touched by a mantle, you have an opportunity. <laughs> We're going to slap the water and see what happens tonight. But see, when you touch, can you imagine what that would be like? Here he is. He's doing his thing. Some of us, we come to a service we don't even realize. God's touching us with the mantle saying, hey, this could be yours if you want it. See, here's the deal. Do you want it? Here, can I, can I, can I just say this? Is this okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most people want to window shop their prophetic words. Some of you today, you like to window shop your words. But it takes courage to actually look at the price. Some of us say we like the feeling of it. We'd rather feel it but not wear it. And we see here with Elisha, look at this. It says that Elijah passed him by, threw his mantle on him, and he left. Look at this. He, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, please let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Look what Elijah says. And he said to him, go back again, for what have I done to you? He knew he was called to anoint him. And he didn't make it easy. 
You know what the problem is today? Is that we just think that things just come easy in the Christian life. Jesus never said you were going to have an easy life. My goodness. I'm ready to boot this thing. <laughs> he never said you're going to have an easy life. See, some of us say we're looking for the easy fix. We're looking for buy this book and everything's going to be okay. No, I want to tell you this right now. Some of you, you got to push through the rejection. you got to realize, wait a second, I was touched by God today. Even if someone says, I don't know if this is for you, I receive it anyway. You know how many times I've been in a room when a prophet prophesies over someone else? And I'm like, that word fits me too. I receive it. You ever done that in the room? You're like, listen, I don't come to a room just be like, oh God, I hope he prophesies over me. No, I pray, oh God, I want to hear the word of the Lord. Because if, if it's a word of the Lord, I can receive it too. So I take it care what other names on it. That doesn't bother me. Because when you're touched by it, you have an opportunity to wear it. You need to come this weekend. You know what we're going to teach you how to do? How to identify what you've been touched by. Some of you don't even realize the mantles that you carry. Part of how you step into your prophetic density is start to understand, wait a second, this is what I carry. When you start to realize what you carry, you'll have a God boldness. When you start to realize, wait a second, I carry this? You know what? I can step in a room. I'm not afraid about pe people. I'm not afraid about what's going on. I can stand in the faith and the confidence of God because I know what I carry and I know who I am. God is raising up a confident generation that's not going to apologize for being bold. That's not going to apologize for, listen, they're going to move in the power and the authority of God because you've been touched by something. Go back again. For what have I done to you? I love this. So Elisha turned back from him, took a yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them, and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment, and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. How many want to be so hungry for God that whatever he asks you to do, you just do it? Here's the problem that I see so often when it comes to stepping into your promise. You're not willing to close the old door. When God is talking about the key of David that opens doors that no man can close and closes doors no man can open, here's where I find Christians struggle the most. They love when God says he's going to open a door. They're terrified when he closes the old one. Because you can only move through a door with faith. So in the same faith that you believe for an open door is the same faith that you have to believe that God's closing the old door for your benefit. We need to learn how to allow God to close the old doors because many times it's the old doors that are stopping your new doors of destiny to open. Even though you have the keys to see doors open, there's still a principle of allowing God to close the old doors. And some of us, were so afraid to take a chance because the fear of making a mistake or feeling like, man, I tried and nothing happened. I want to tell you this, friends. We don't have the luxury of holding on to our old season. Some of us, we need to kill off our old season and start to chase after what God's doing in the new. But you know what it takes? It takes courage. And listen, I'm not saying it's easy. Jeremy, you've done it. I've done it. You know, we, we I, I could share story after story. I, you know, we're... In June, this June, we're hosting an event. It cost me a quarter of a million dollars for one day. I didn't start there. I started in the days where the Lord spoke to me. I remember when I was, listen, I remember when I was 16 years old. I had a whole basketball career ahead of me. I had a college scholarship, four-year four full ride. The Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to, I got a destiny for you. I'm going to take you all over the world. But it's going to cost you something. See, the anointing, listen today, salvation's free, but if you want to operate in the anointing of heaven, it's going to cost you. And with every season, here's a word. This is something you've got to write down. For every new season, there's always a sacrifice. And many times, the sacrifice is the sacrifice of the old season. 
And you've got to be willing to sacrifice that which was in the old season to embrace the new door of opportunity. And I remember 16 years old, whole University of Washington, full ride, four years. The Lord told me, he said, do you trust me? I said, God, I don't know. <laughs> Wanted to play basketball, I had my whole dream. Playing sports, four years, full ride, everything. God says, I want you to give it all up and serve me. I said, God, I don't know if I could do that. He said, Sammy, I want to teach you what it means to live by faith and trust me. Now, I'm not saying everybody has to do this, but every person will have a season of sacrifice. And so I gave it up to the Lord. I remember I said, God, I trust you. I would rather, I would rather pursue after the fullness of God and make mistakes than be coddled in complacency and do nothing. And that one sacrifice opened up so many, beyond what I could think or imagine, ministry. I've had the privilege of being the NBA chaplain for the All-Star Game in Toronto. I, I, I minister with Toronto Raptors. I, I do stuff with sports all over. We host sporting events with thousands of kids, and, and we're seeing thousands and thousands of decisions for Jesus. We're now renting stadiums. It didn't start there. It started from a place of sacrifice out of the old season. Some of you right now, your greatest joy is going to, you're going to realize, Lord, I, what I have right now, I give to you because in your hands, it's so much more than in my hands. Second key of perseverance that Elisha went through. I'm going to read this out. It's the perseverance through your hiddenness. Bro. How many believe there's a glory in hiddenness? Do you believe that? It's the glory of God to hide our matter. It's the glory of kings to search it out. God always hides the most precious things. So if you're going through a, a season of hiddenness, you know what that tells me? You're very precious in the sight of God. And we see here with Elisha that he goes from being in a place with oxen to now serving the prophet to look at this. If you, if you read 2 Kings 3.11, this is later on. This is the king saying this, King Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat said, is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here who poured water on the hands of Elijah. What a story. What's your claim to fame? Poured water on a man's hands. Can I tell you, one of the greatest keys that we need to learn in our generation, I'm talking about my generation, is the blessing of serving. You know why God brings you through hiddenness and serving? It's because you realize that ministry is not about being on stage. Ministry is learning how to be a servant of all. And when you get launched into your dreams and destiny, you know what the first thing God wants to kill is your ego. Because your ego is costly. Your ego is expensive. It'll cost you much. And so what happens is, is that God in his wisdom always brings you through a season of hiddenness where all of a sudden everything dies that's not of him. You know, when I started, when I was launched into ministry, I served my dad. How many, how many have seen Charlie Robinson? You guys have seen Charlie? I, I love Charlie. And my, my mom, Shirley. My mom, Shirley, is one of the most prophetic people I know. I, I tell people all the time, be careful to get a word from Shirley Robinson. She will read your mail. She did my whole life. I try to, be, I try to rebel. She would pray, get the word of knowledge, say, you're going to do this. I'm like, mom, come on. That's, the, that's spiritual parenting 101 right there. But, but listen, when I was 16, I remember going from college scholarship, being launched out, the Lord spoke to me, said, you're going to serve your dad. I served my dad for years. You know what it looked like? I started catching for my dad, taking his bags. People would say, Sammy, you got an incredible call. They would prophesy all these things. You know what my dad would tell me? Keep serving. Keep going low. Keep doing this. And I said, God, what's going on? And I remember I would catch for years. And I would be catching and I'd be watching. And one day I told the Lord, I said, God, I feel like I, I'm a full-time catcher. You know what David said? How about David would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord? You know what the Lord told me? He said, Sammy, you, know, you want to know why I'm getting you to catch? Some of you don't even realize why you're, God will ask you to catch. Some of you are going to want to catch in this next. This is going to, some of you are going to, literally going to want to catch after I say this. <laughs> he said, because you have a heart to catch, and because you're allowing yourself to serve here, 
you're seeing things that other people don't see. See what happened when I started to catch? I started, I didn't know this at the time. I started watching my dad, how he'd flow in the spirit. Because when people were watching them, I couldn't see the person. I could just watch my dad, and I'd watch how he would move in the spirit. All of a sudden, he would get words of knowledge, and he'd move. And I didn't realize, but I was getting a firsthand view of how my dad was reading the voice of God in real time. I started catching speakers. I didn't realize I was literally pulling on their ways of discernment of how to move in miracles, how to prophesy, how to move in words of knowledge. I wouldn't give up those years for the world. But see, some of us, we just think, well, that's just a job. No, that's not a job. It's an opportunity. Because you know what happened with Elisha? Every time he took that water and put it on his hands, those hands weren't just man's hands. Those hands were anointed by God. Those hands saw miracles. When's the last time that you looked at your job and said, this job isn't just a job. There's actually anointing and there's a transference of anointing on what I'm doing. I'm not just washing someone's hands. I'm not just a greeter at a door. I'm not just helping out here. I'm actually receiving something. Even when I don't get the credit for it, even when people don't see it, come on somebody. Listen, how many know heaven sees what you're going through and heaven sees the sacrifice and when you persevere in hiddenness, there's always breakthrough. Because anybody can preach. It's a word. Preachers dime a dozen. How many preachers are? Listen, if, it was, if America was going to get saved by preaching, it would already been done. There's a million preachers. But you know what you need more than anything? The anointing. Yeah. You know what you need right now is the authority of God. You know how you get that? Through hiddenness. You know where you get that? When nobody's around, what are you doing? It's easy to get excited in church, but when you go home, do you still contend for revival? I remember one of the greatest lessons I ever learned from my dad. You want to talk about stepping into your prophetic destiny? This is something right here. This is a key for you. This one's free. No, I'm kidding. One of the greatest miracles I ever, miracle service I was in, I was in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I saw the most amazing things, bro. I was in a room. It was like God just turned the anointing level 10. You ever been in that? Have you ever felt like you go in a service and you're like, you are not the same person? Like, you could preach 100 times, and it's like that one out of 100. It's like Clark Kent goes to Superman. I mean, like, next level. And I'm in the room, and all of a sudden, it was like the, the high beams of heaven. I called one person out. I said, sir, you only have one working lung. The guy goes, yes. I said, God's going to heal you right now. God recreated a brand new lung in the service. <laughs> Tumors dissolving, metal dissolving. It was like, bro, it was the easiest. It was like butter. Miracle, 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 breakthrough, breakthrough, crazy words, people getting saved, the glory of God showing up where people were like, oh, my goodness. It was like the lights went 10x in the room. I was so amped. My dad was there. And I, I'm, I'm, it was like one of those things where, like, you know, I, I have so much respect and honor for my dad. I was like, how can I say this? I was so happy my dad was in the room because I was like, my spiritual dad is here. And he's see, I'm like, this is amazing. I felt like I drank five Red Bulls in the spirit, man. I, I go back home or back to the hotel, and I'm buzzing. And my dad's chill. He's not getting excited as me. I'm like, Dad, did you see that? That person with the one line? He's like, that's awesome. I said, the guy over here that literally broke his leg, God healed. He's like, that's awesome. All, all this stuff. And he's just like, that's awesome. But he's not like, I was like, whoop, whoop, whoop. I was like so high. Da, 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 da. And he says, Sammy, I want to tell you something. I said, what? He said, you want to know what's greater than all of this? I said, what could be greater than this meeting? He said, when you go to bed, and you lie down, and you wake up the next morning, and whether you feel the anointing or not, he says, but you say to the Holy Spirit, good morning, Holy Spirit, I want to walk with you today. He said, that's greater than everything you saw yesterday, because yesterday's miracles are still yesterday's miracles, and it's a choice every day to serve the Lord. Listen, your, your relationship with God is not dependent on a decision 20 years ago. It is a choice every single day. Shifted my whole mentality. You know what I do every morning? Holy Spirit, I want to walk with you. What do you want to do, Holy Spirit? I, I want to get hungry and not live off of yesterday's testimony. Is there anybody here today? Listen, praise God for what he did yesterday. But what is he doing right here and right now? Third thing God releases in perseverance. This is what we're in right now. It's the perseverance of transition. 
things are changing. You got to be willing to stay the course. The world is getting darker. We're seeing people conform to the culture of this world. People are changing scripture. We're seeing all of this stuff happen. I got a word for you right now. There are many things that are happening in the world today. Change is happening very fast. But God is looking for a generation whose eyes are fixed on him. What has your focus is going to have power over you in this season. And we see with Elisha, and I don't have to get, you can read this yourself, but when you get into 2 Kings chapter 2, it's the whole story of Elisha and Elijah. And Elijah saying, listen, I'm about to go. And you know what Elisha does? He says, listen, you're not going without me. I'm going to be with you. And all the other prophets and all the other people say, listen, Elisha, you know that Elijah's leaving. What does Elisha do? Be quiet. I'm going to be with you. I'm not going anywhere. Here's a word for you right now. Some of you, you got friends out there that are saying, I don't know about this revival stuff. You know what you need to say? Be quiet. I'm not going anywhere because I'm not going to miss the hour of visitation. Here's a word today. Some of us right now, we got to silence the noise. We got to silence the critic. We got to silence the doubters and say, I'm not going anywhere. There's a blessing in your perseverance in the time of transition where people say, well, I think the glory's passed on or I think this is happening in America. Can I say this right now? The greatest days are coming to America right here and right now. In the midst of trials and tribulations, there's a move of the Spirit. But you got to persevere. And you got to be willing to keep looking at what God is doing in the midst of all the noise. See, God is raising up a generation whose eyes are fixed on him. They're not looking at the world. They're not looking at the flash. They're not looking for the next thing. Their eyes are fixed on him. Whatever he's doing, like what Elijah said, if you see me when I go, you can have the double portion. Here's a word right now. So many people are getting caught up with the lights and the flash and all this other stuff, but they don't realize that there's an opportunity to receive a double portion. But what are your eyes fixed on? See, if you want to make it in a season of perseverance through transition, it's all about your focus. See, I believe God is correcting our focus in this season. He's going to give people laser focus where he's cutting out all the other things that don't matter. All the other stuff that doesn't matter. God is shifting our focus. He wants to give us eyes to see. How many want to see the way that he sees? See, there's about to be words in the sea. I'm prophesying this right here in this church. Woo, there's about to be words. I mean, boom, but words. I remember, I'm telling you, Jeremy, just like my dad in 2004, when I was in Indonesia, there's words coming out of this. Get ready. Signs and wonder words are going to be released in this next season, coming right out of here, that are going to affect the nation and the nations. And I know you've had them before, bro. You've, you, came to, you came to Edmonton and talked about uh, a meteor. Remember that? You said there's a meteor going to be released the next day. A meteor came. That's pretty crazy. Here's the deal. 2004, my dad, I was with him in Indonesia. All of a sudden, the glory of God showed up in the car. My dad said, get ready. He said, we need to record this. He said, get ready. Indonesia is about to have a massive earthquake because God is binding a spirit that is in the second heaven and he's casting it down. And he said, get ready. There's about to be a full-blown move of God, but there's a tsunami wave that's coming and tell the people to, re like, to prepare. The church is not losing, but it's winning. And he says, a lot of people are going to get affected. Tell the church they're winning and not losing. He said that over and over. That word got released, sent to millions of people. Can I tell you what happened? To my dad, Charlie, he was called a false prophet. We left the next day. Dude, for seven days, people said we were a false prophet. We'll never come back to Indonesia. Seven days later, the earthquake happens in Indonesia. Tsunami wave comes. Millions of people are affected. But there was a portion of the church that believed the word and they prepared and they said to themselves, we're winning, not losing. In the midst of crisis, we're winning, not losing. In the midst of death, we're winning and not losing. How many believe there's a people that are going to see a situation different in this time? That they're winning and not losing. Even in the midst of trial, we're winning and not losing. See, there's a perseverance that comes over your vision. That can see things other people can't see. When you can see things other people can't see, you can have. What they would love to have, but they can't have. We went from churches, going into churches that were 300, to all of a sudden they exploded to over 48,000. 
We saw hundreds and thousands. I keep doing that. We keep seeing, Lord, let the river flow. Thank you. We saw hundreds of thousands of Muslims give their lives to Jesus. Hundreds of thousands. Why? Because we saw a different way. So we're today. God's releasing a double portion in this season. The one that holds the key of David in his hand that opens doors no man can close and closes doors no man can open. He, I believe today there's an invitation to step into a new door, into a new season. But you got to be willing to move with perseverance. You got to be willing. I, I believe this right now. This is not a season to play it safe. This is a season to move forward. The Lord told me May 1st is where everything's changing. May 1st, get ready. You might not see anything in the natural take place on May 1st, but I'm going to tell you everything's changing starting in May. God's releasing. There's a new season coming on the earth. What does it look like? I know some people are like, what does it look like? Step through and find out. Step through. Well, I don't know. I'm scared. The unknown's always a little intimidating. But I'm going to tell you this right now. You haven't come this far just to come this far. Right here, right now. How many say amen? Come on, Andrew, can I get you up on the, I just feel this. How many say right here, right now? How many are ready for a fresh encounter right now? Ooh. See, I, I, I want to say this again. There's this whole week. This whole week is about birthing your prophetic destiny. I think for some of us, we've been pregnant for far too long. God wants us to start to birth these prophetic words. I believe it's time to step into this. And I want to encourage you this week to lock in this week. There's going to be an anointing to see these words come to pass. And we need this. I don't want to miss an hour of visitation. But here's what I believe God wants us to do. Can we, can we do this? Can we just lift up our hands all over this place? Whew. Man. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. See, at the end of worship, when Jeremy got up and was flowing with Andrew, I saw a door open up on the stage. I saw it. I said, Lord, what's going on? He said, Sammy, I, I've got a door open up for this next season. He says, it's a door of opportunity. And here's how the Lord put it. An opportunity of a lifetime is found in the lifetime of the opportunity. He said, there is a door that is set before us in this season. And I believe it's time to step through. Not just talk about revival, not just talk about the words, but it's time to see these words come to pass. Somebody say amen. And here's what I want us to do with our hands lifted up. I believe this right now, that God is anointing a generation with a double portion of his spirit because he's found a generation that it's not about trying to be the most anointed or the most gifted, but they've said yes to God and they have not stopped. And Lord, I thank you that in this room, there is a blessing of perseverance in this room. There's a blessing for those who have not given up. Like David said, I would have fainted had I not believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God, I thank you right now. Like David said, we're going to taste and see that the Lord is good. So Father, I thank you all over this room. Lord, I thank you that we're going to taste and see whew, that you are good. Someone say good. Here's what I want you to do. Whew. I want us to take a drink tonight. Whew. I believe there's a, a river of the glory of God that is flowing in this place. I can see miracles. There's things that are going to get released here in a moment, but I just feel like we need a drink tonight of his presence. Some of you, God wants to refresh you tonight. If you've come in here struggling and been like, Lord, I, I need breakthrough. Tonight is that night. So I want you tonight, listen, some of you got to stand up all over this place. Woo! Father, we thank you for the river that's here. I want you by faith to make a barrel like this. Some of you are like, what am I doing? Listen, you're acting with childlike faith tonight. You're saying, God, I don't want just a little bit. I want everything that you have for me. And I want you to take this barrel. I want you to dip it in the river. Whew. I want you to tip back your head and drink. Hey. Woo. 
drink. Drink. Lord, we just drink today. Woo! Lord, we drink. Father, we just thank you right now. I want you to do it again. Lord, we just take that barrel, dip it in the river. Woo! Tip back our head. And we drink. <laughs> drink. God, we don't want to taste and see. Taste and see that you are good. That you are good. Whoo. Shora baba de 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 de. Whoo. Lord, we just choose today. I just, Lord, we just step in. I'll tell you that I can see the door. Lord, we step in right now by faith. How do you step in? You lean in with your heart with expectation. So in this moment, I want you to lean in. Whew. This is how you step in. Lord, we lean in expecting to receive. Father, I thank you right now. We say yes to the invitation. Lord, we step in. Lord, we step in. Some of you are just feeling this right now. Lord, I thank you. We step in right now into the abundance. We step in right now into the favor. We step in right now, Lord, into that spirit of revival today, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Whoa! Step in, step in. Woo! Step in, step in. Wow! This is awesome. Whoo! Thank you, Lord. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for some people here. Come on, I'm going to pray for my, my man here in the black shirt. You got your head down. Come here, come here. It's wild. Whew. Sure. Thank you, God. Come here. Father, I thank you for my friend. Whew. Whoa. Lord, I thank you right now. I see all the dots connecting. This is the season right now. God's about to connect all the dots. He's about to give you unusual favor. Father, I thank you right now. This is a year of completion. I see all of these loops. God says, get ready. He's going to close the loops. This is going to be the year. Father, I thank you that uh, where it talks about he's the author and the finisher. This is the year of the finishing work of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the releasing right now of the divine favor of the Lord. Where Lord, people, I see divine connections coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Lord, we release Release them now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the releasing of the angels. God's releasing angels of assistance, Father, to bring in the divine connections. And so, Lord, I thank you for rooms that are opening up, God. Lord, rooms of favor, rooms of breakthrough. Lord, we release it over him now Woo! in Jesus' name. You're going to break a spirit of poverty. Lord, I thank you right now. There's going to be a releasing of an anointing to break poverty off a generation. Father, I thank you for that anointing right now. Lord, I thank you right now. Woo. Lord, there's going to be a releasing of a supernatural inheritance over my brother. Father, I thank you for the releasing of it right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for the word of God. Wow. The treasures of the word in this season. That, Lord, all your promises are yes and amen. I just see this. I see you opening up the word. It's going to be like a treasure chest of the promises of the Lord. Father, I thank you for the releasing of it right now. Woo. And, Lord, I thank you. Lord, for those divine connections. There's, there, I keep seeing other states, people coming in. There's going to be a connection point from people from other states. Father, I thank you for the releasing of it right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, bring them in in this season. Because the vision that comes from heaven is going to be funded by heaven. Whew. Come on. Whew. Whoa. You know what God's going to do? There's... There's restoration on the other side of this right now. Someone got, there's someone here you got like, there's going to be some kind of business thing with a family member or something. Something got jacked with family. Who are you? I, I don't know if there was like a business thing with family. Who is this person? God's going to restore something right now in, with family, with business. Does that make sense to somebody here today? Does that, I just keep seeing this. There's going to be a restoration. 
right now in Jesus' name. Who is this? Lord, I thank you for the releasing of it right now. Does that make sense? Lord, I thank you for breakthrough with family right now. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. So, Lord, I thank you for the releasing of it right now. Lord, for my brother in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you right now. Lord, release the full restoration right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we speak all the finances have to come back now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you too for revival. Lord, right now, revival in the family. Lord, release the oil right now. Lord, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Father, we thank you for the releasing of it right now. Lord, let a mighty move of God come in the mighty name of Jesus. How many say amen? Wow. Is there, is there someone here that's thinking about, I keep seeing like an on, someone like about to create a website for an online business or something. Does that make sense? Is anybody here? Is that you? Yeah. Okay, because I just saw like a new website and a refresh that God's releasing. Just lift up your hands. Lord, I thank you right now, Lord, for this new season of creativity. I thank you, God, right now. Lord, I, I just keep seeing this. God's going to teach you how to move out of the realm of the Spirit for your creativity where it's like, I have a friend of mine, they, they pray four hours and they work four hours and God literally has like quadrupled their business. There's like an anointing for you, even for missions and things that are God's going to partner with. There's something about this next season, you're going to partner with God, with the supernatural funds and the finances. Father, I thank you right now for the releasing of it. Lord, I thank you right now. There's like, Lord, I thank you for just even in this season, God, you're going to connect her with like influencers and Lord, people in this season that she's not connected with in the previous season. God, I thank you for the open door of influence being released right now. And Lord, I thank you. I see finances like literally going in for those who feel like they have no voice. I see you removing muzzles off of people's mouths. Those that feel trapped, that have been pain. I see people in abuse. Lord, I thank you for healing. There's like women in abuse. God's going to use you in this season to see restoration where God's going to remove the muzzle off of their mouth. Where, where it talks about in Job, I broke the fangs of the wicked and I plucked the innocent from their teeth. Father, I thank you for the release Sing of it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Whoo. Father, I thank you right now. Wow, 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 wow. Come on, can we just give God praise? Man, thank you, Lord, man. What is this? Huh. I just, Lord, I thank you right now. There's like a, Somebody here, something happened with, someone was like scammed or something. Who is that? Something happened with like a, like, like something to do with like, you were like, I, scam, something with a card or something. Like, like, I don't know if it was your credit card. Who are you? Is that, who is that? Your sister? Two, I just saw this. Did this just happen a little while ago? When did it happen? It happened today. I just saw, Lord, I thank you right now for the restoration for your sister right now where today she was charged to over $2,000. Father, I thank you right now that, Lord, we just catch that thief right now and we command everything gets fully restored in the mighty name of Jesus. But I've been just restored. Lord, I thank you for supernatural breakthrough that is being released right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Wow. Thank you, God. Woo. What is this? Is there someone here? You, I see like literally someone at night periodically. It's like you're getting dreams where you're, you're literally ministering in Africa. Who are you? Who is this? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I see like people like you're ministering in another country. I literally see like Africa. There's stuff that's going. God's about to fund for mission trips. Who is this? Does that make sense? Is that you? Yeah, stand up. The back. Lord, I thank you right now. God's going to open up doors. Lord, I thank you right now for the releasing right now. Lord, of supernatural finances, Father, I think that a vision that comes from heaven will be funded by heaven. But also, too, there's, Lord, I thank you. Wow. Lord, I thank you for restoration. God's going to restore right now. Lord, 
I, I thank you for the fire of God that's coming right now. Uh, and there's like a fire of restoration God wants to release right now in Jesus' name. Where the enemy tried to come after your past right now, God's going to restore the areas of the past right now. Father, I thank you for sevenfold restoration being released right now in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, I thank you even too for restoration over the family. Lord, I thank you. Let this be a season right now of, Lord, divine restoration touching the whole entire family. Lord, we thank Thank you for the spirit of revival to fall right now in Jesus' name. Whoo. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Thank you, Lord. There's someone in here, you're, uh, you were just praying. You need a miracle in your mouth, but you something to do with dental. Like, I don't know if you have dental or not. You can't pay for dental. Who is this? Something about teeth. You need a miracle in your teeth, but it's like, I don't know. You're like, man, I don't know if I can afford this. I feel like God wants to heal your teeth. Who are you? Who is this? Does that make sense to somebody? Something to do with the teeth. Lord, I thank you for healing of the teeth right now in Jesus' name. Yeah? Lord, I thank you for right now for the releasing right now for my sister over here. Lord, I thank you right now. Man, I can feel the joy. I'm coming over. Are you okay if I put my hand on your head? Yeah, Lord. <laughs> you know when, 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 oh, if you've ever had laughing gas, well, this is a word for you right now. God, Lord, I thank you where she's sowed with tears. She's going to reap with joy. And Lord, I thank you right now. Lord, that the joy of the Lord is her strength. And Lord, we speak healing over the teeth right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you. There's like a new song for a new season. There's a whole realm of creativity and there's a whole realm of fresh encounter God's going to bring you into in this season. I see like God's restoring wings. This is a year where God's restoring the wings where it's felt like, like the wings have been clipped. God's releasing right now that anointing to soar. And so Father, I thank you that she's stepping into a new season a prophetic revelation. She's stepping into a new season of soaring in the spirit. And Lord, I thank you that she's going to go higher than she's ever gone before. And Lord, we thank you for the healing of those teeth. Woo! Wow. Also, too, healing of relationships, God. Lord, I thank you right now. There's like a full, man, I see words that were spoken against you. God, I'm telling you right now, there's going to be a restoration. Father, we thank you right now for divine restoration. Where they, I see like, like, the words of the enemy going back into his camp. Lord, I thank you right now. This is going to be your where God's going to give you double glory. Wow. Lord, I thank you for double. Lord, I thank you that this is going to be your, Lord, where you're going to give her the double. Double for the trouble. Oof. Lord, we just release it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Wow. Also, too, you haven't missed anything. God's going to even restore what feels like lost time. There's a restoration of time in this season. Lord, I thank you for that acceleration in this season. Lord, I thank you that this is going to be a time to, I see you writing again. I see writing. I see, Lord, I thank you for the releasing of it right now. Lord, that whole creative realm, Lord, let it be released in the mighty name of Jesus. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. You need a miracle. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. Top of her head to the sole of her feet right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Whoo. Lord, we just release it right now. Who's had the teeth issue here? Do you have any teeth pain? Yeah, come here. I just felt that. Yeah. Lord, I thank you right now. Whew. So, Lord, new teeth, new season. New season, new season, new season, new season, new season. I, I literally, man, when I was at worship, I texted Jeremy and I said, I see a scroll. Oh, shaka da 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 I see a scroll with destiny written all over it. It's time to take it. Take it, 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 take it. Whoa. Lord, I thank you right now for the stepping into the new season. Whoo, this is a word for you. Lord, she's going to step into a new season. Right now, she's going to step into a new season. I'll tell you what, right now, you step in. Where your heart is, there your treasure is also. This is your word today. There's treasure of the new season, but you got to put your heart in the new season. Lord, I thank you right now. Where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Lord, I thank you right now. Lord, I thank you right now for the releasing. Lord, as she lets her heart go in and dream in this new season, Lord, she's going to find there's an abundance. Father, I thank you right now. There's an abundance. There's an abundance. There's an abundance. Lord, we just release that abundance over her right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, remove every limitation. God, I break off every limitation, every lie of the enemy that's trying to tell you what you can or can't do. We just shatter it now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for this season. Lord, of an increased capacity, God, I thank you that the best is yet to come right here and right now. Lord, I tell you, you're going to run with it. 
and run and run and run and run and run. Lord, I thank you right now. I thank you even from today on, God. There's like a fresh anointing that's coming over you. Whoo. There's a fresh anointing, a fresh boldness that's coming. Lord, we just release it now in Jesus' name. Whoo. Whoa. See, some of you, you need this today. God wants to give you boldness. I, I literally, I'm seeing, whew. Wow. Some of you got to grab that scroll tonight. Lord, we receive it tonight. Lord, we receive it tonight. Lord, those scrolls of destiny, Lord, we receive it tonight. Lord, and I thank you right now. When we say yes, God's going to unravel it. Lord, I thank you right now. Lord, I thank you for direction. I thank you for wisdom. I thank you, God, right now for the releasing of it. In Jesus' name right now. Wow. Lord, we say yes. Wow. Man. Wow. Where is my sister? I want to pray. I want to pray for her. Right here. Can you stand? Can you stand up? You know, yeah, you just turned. Yeah, yeah, you, you. Can you stand up? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Lib. Come here. <laughs> Whoa, I see you. Whoa. I just see you walking in your, your house. Whoa. Oh. Lord, I thank you right now. Like David said, I would have fainted had I not believed. I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I see you decreeing the word of the Lord. And it's like, it's like where it says in Job, decree a thing and it shall be established. There's a releasing right now of the establishing word of the Lord. I see you've been building into your new season through your prophetic decrees you're about to step into. Whoo! This whole new season. I see you walking with the Lord in your kitchen, decreeing. I see it right now that God's just, get ready. Get ready. Whoa, get ready because you're about to see, you're about to eat of the fruit of your words. Whoo! You're about to eat of the fruit of your words. I feel like God's been speaking this right now. Woo, she's going to taste and see that the Lord is good. I see the worship music. I'm literally, I feel like I'm in your house. Does this make sense? I see you decreeing in your kitchen. You're walking around in your kitchen, like in a circle, like a path. I can see it. I literally see it. You're walking, and I see you decreeing with the worship music on. And God says you're about to eat of the fruit. Father, I thank you for the releasing of it right now. In <laughs> right now. Shoof. Woo. My gosh. Man, I, yeah. Sometimes, you just lean in. This is, this is a word. You want to learn how to step into your prophetic destiny? You need to learn how to lean in with expectation. This week, you're going to learn. This is one of the activations I'm going to be teaching. Is when you receive a word, how many would like to not just receive a word, but actually step in to feel what that word is like? I'm going to teach you this week. It's all about the matter of the heart. You see through the eyes of the heart, and we're, I'm going to teach how to lean in with your heart to see with expectation. You can start to touch the new realm, but it all starts with your heart. It all starts right here, and when you learn how to lean in, you want to know how words of knowledge, everything I move in, it's all through the leaning of the heart. When you learn how to lean in with your heart, expecting that you're going to receive all of a sudden, God starts to give you glimpses and pictures, and you start to feel your next season. That's how I start to make decisions. God will speak to me about something. He's like, I'm going to unlock stadiums. I'll lean in, and all of a sudden, as I lean in, I'll know the exact stadium that I'm supposed to do. Why? Because when I lean in with my heart, God gives me a look of what the prophetic promise looks like. And then once I know that, I know how to believe for it. See, some of us today... We have prophetic promise, but it's so out there that we don't know what it looks like. we got to learn how to step in the spirit to see it. Because once you see it, you can have it. Oh. It's going to be an activation. It's going to be awesome. You're gonna lean in. You're going to see it. You're going to say, thank you, Lord. And you know what's going to happen? I'll tell you right now. It's going to manifest. I'm talking to you guys. Stadiums. How? You lean in, you see it. What you see, you can have. Oh, come this week. It's going to be, I'm telling you right now, it's going to, some of you, literally, it's going to change your whole life. Man. Huh. Lord, we just lean in. Just, Lord, in this moment, Lord, we just lean in. Huh. Wow. 
I said, this is the most interesting thing. I, I keep seeing, um, I don't know if, if is, is there someone here, your, your, is someone here, your, your kids are still living in your, your house? Is that you? Kids in the house? Is anyone in the basement? Is there anybody here? Does this make sense? I'm literally, I see in the, I see like, I literally stepped into something and it was like, someone was living like almost like downstairs. God's about to move. Who is that? Maybe you're watching online, but I literally saw this. I was like, I went in. I feel like they're in there like, maybe you're watching online here too, but I feel like they're like, like late 20s, early 30s. God's about to radically touch them right now. Whoo. Lord, I thank you for the glory of God just filling the house. And Lord, I think I, it's like a sun. There's right now, there's someone you're either watching or you're in the room. I'm just going to pray this out. Lord, I thank you. There's a releasing right now of the supernatural glory of God that's coming over them right now. Lord, I thank you for right now visions and dreams. Lord, I thank you right now where there's been a heaviness, that heaviness is coming off now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we release the oil of heaven coming right now, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. What is this? I don't, I, there's, okay, I want to push in more because some people would be like, okay, there's something about, what's the word like? I actually believe like Matthew or something's also going to mean someone to wa who's watching. It's like Matthew. Matthew's like a, one of the names in the family right now. Your son is about to get radically touched. Lord, I thank you for the releasing of the glory of God. How many say amen? Oh. Who's, who's had this thing with their ear off and on? This like ring, has that been you? Yeah, right ear? Yeah, I just, Lord, I thank you. Lord, we just thank you that it just opens now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for that anointing right now in Jesus' name right now. And any kind of thing, I don't know if you've ever felt the pressure on your head, your neck and your head. Does that make sense? Like the back here and it goes up. Does that make sense? Yeah, it goes around. God's going to remove that now in Jesus' name. All the pressure in the neck and the head comes off now. Lord, we thank you for the releasing right now, a breakthrough. Every attack of the enemy stops now in Jesus' name. And there's a clarity coming over the mind. I see it right now that the pressure in the head and the confusion lifts right now that this is going to be a year of the, the right now, the clarity of the Lord. We just cut that band right now in Jesus' name. Whoo! Lord, we release the supernatural peace of the Lord. Come on. What's going on, Chelsea? Ruth says that her son is 30 years old and lives with her in the basement. Okay, so Lord, we just thank you just for touching right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we release the glory of God right now in Jesus' mighty name. Right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you right now that there's going to be like an anointing of worship music that's going to come. Ruth, I keep seeing right now where where there's been like, I feel like I'm almost in this playlist where it's almost been like, um, it's almost like been depressing music. Pain, like I just keep hearing this music of pain. God's going to shift it to worship music in this next season. Father, I thank you right now for that anointing coming right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we thank you for the releasing of it right now in Jesus' name. Wow. Come on. Come on, can we just do this one more time? Can we just lift up our hands all over this room? Why don't we just stand up? Here's what I want to do. It, if you're ready to accept the invitation tonight, and you're like, I, I want to step into this new thing, I want you to come forward right now to the altar. If you're like, man, I want this. I want to step into the new. I, I don't want to. Whoo. I want to accept the invitation tonight. I'm telling you, there's a blessing on the perseverance. That's what I so love about Fire and Glory family. Is that, wow, you're not here for a moment. You're not here for a conference, but you're truly here for his presence. And I love what Moses said, unless your presence goes with us, we're no different than anyone else. And I believe this right now. We're in a time of 
a visitation. I believe we're in a time of greater glory. And here's what I want us to do. I just want us to close our eyes. I just want us to get into a posture of receiving. Because there's a window of opportunity right now to step into. And in a moment, Andrew, I'm going to give this over to you. And I've, I feel like here's what God wants you to do. You don't strive to step into the door. I actually, when I saw the door that was here, I, I could feel a wind. And I felt like the Lord was speaking this to me. And then Jeremy went into this whole thing about eagles and soaring. I feel like the Lord is saying this tonight. You don't strive to step in. You surrender. And when you surrender to him, the wind of the Spirit is going to push you into this new season. And I see some of us, we're surrendering the old season. We're surrendering what we've known. We're surrendering our old success. And we're leaning into our beloved with expectation, saying, God, I thank you, even though I might not know what the next season looks like. I might not know what the opportunity is ahead of me. But God, I trust you. And I surrender in this moment, knowing it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. And I believe that there's a wind that is blowing in this place. And so, Lord, we lift up our sails today of hope. We lift up our sails today of faith and expectation. And, Lord, we say we want to soar with you. We want to step through the door. Whew. You reign above it all. You reign above it all. Oh, for the universe and over every heart, there is no higher name. Jesus, you reign above it all. Let all of heaven and the earth erupt in song. Sing hallelujah. Sing that tonight. And I am yours. I am yours. All my days, Jesus, I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. For all my days, Jesus, I
We hear you say, come up here, come up now. Come up here. We want to be with you. There's a voice that's saying tonight, would you come up here? Would you come up now? I want to see you. Oh, I want to be with you. I can hear the Spirit calling tonight. He's calling us tonight, saying, come up here, come up now. I want to show you, I want to show you what I see. Come up here, come up now want to show you this next season come up here come up now it's so much better than what you could ever believe come up here come up now oh my beloved there's an invitation to come up here there's an invitation to see how he sees so we say yes so we say yes. I want to fly. I want to fly. I want to fly. want to fly with you tonight. I want to spread my wings tonight. I want to fly. I want to fly. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I can just hear that old Jason Upton song. Like an eagle in the sky, I want to fly. I want to fly. And higher and higher. Higher and higher, I want to fly. Higher and higher. Wow. We can go so much higher. I feel this tonight. Lord, I thank you. You're removing obstacles tonight. Removing fear tonight. Because you want us to fly. Some doors you walk through, some doors you fly through. I want to fly. Oh, Lord, I want to fly. Some doors you walk through, some doors you fly through. I want to fly higher and higher, higher and higher. I want to fly. Till I see the things you see. I 
I want to see the things you see. God, we're asking, would you restore faith like a child? Forgive us for making things so complicated. Forgive us for trying to make things more educated. Lord, we want faith like a child that trusts you, that believes you, because you've never let me fall. You've never let me fall. There's an invitation tonight to step into new realms with the Lord. It's not by might, no by power, but it's by His Spirit. I feel like God is saying, sometimes you climb through, but sometimes you fly through. This is your season to fly. Some of us are tired from climbing, and God is saying it's time to let go and let go and fly. fly the air is different up there heaviness can't stand wow some of us today God said I want to remove that heaviness and I'm going to bring you into the the lightness of the spirit his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Whew. Wow. Lord, we step into this new season. We don't have to strive for it, we surrender. Wow. No, I, I hear the Lord saying this. You spread your wings because you know that I'm faithful. You spread your wings because you know that I'm never going to let you down. You spread your wings because when I say you're going to fly, you're going to fly. You don't have to worry. So fly. Fly. Wow. I can hear heaven singing this tonight. Fly. Father, we just thank you. Whew. And we thank you for what you're doing all over this room. Just acknowledge your presence. We lean in right now.
Some of you are getting new mantles as we're leaning in tonight. It's the most beautiful thing I'm seeing. God's changing garments tonight. Lord, I thank you. Some of us right now, the old clothes, the old season is coming off right now. And Lord, I thank you that you're clothing them with promise. I'm seeing people get it. This is awesome. I'm seeing people getting mantle today. It's like, it's like Joseph's coat of many colors. Lord, I thank you for the promises of God. Lord, we remind ourselves today Yes, God. 